Okay, so this is the final screencast, number five for assignment zero. Probably won't do so many for future assignments, uh, but hopefully these are helpful. So the last thing I want to look at, we've, we've talked about, um, we've set up an development environment, we've built a kernel, we've poked around in the source tree a little bit, and we've used Git. And finally, we're going to get to uh, GDB. So what is GDB? Uh, GDB is the GNU debugger. Um, and this is uh, another extremely, again, this is not uh, something we invented. Uh, the GNU debugger has uh, been a companion to the GNU compiler for a long time. So there's a gazillion pieces of documentation out there. Um, now, you know, I just want to point out, you don't have to use GDB. Um, but you will want to, um, you, you know, otherwise you will just be in a world of hurt. Um, there are ways to debug things without using GDB and you may have gotten away with them in the past. You've put printf statements in your code or, you know, you've, uh, just used the, your incredibly well developed powers of deductive reasoning or something, but, um, but this is tough stuff, right? And particularly when you start to develop uh, and debug multi-threaded code and code that has complex interactions with other things, you're, you're going to want to to have GDB as part of your arsenal. Um, okay, so you know, again, a, a GDB tutorial is, is kind of beyond the scope of what I'm trying to do. I, I will show you a little bit about how to get started and get GDB uh, running in your OS 161 environment. Um, so I'm back in my root directory here. Uh, I can boot up a kernel, so I'm in good shape there. Um, However, um, debugging using GDB requires two windows because I need to run my kernel in one window and interact with it and then connect with GDB in the second window. And that's because you actually need to debug the kernel and connect through a socket to the, um, to the Sys161 simulator. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my handy Tmux companion. If you don't know Tmux, uh, it's an awesome tool. It's definitely worth learning. Um, so what Tmux essentially allows me to do is to create multiple terminal windows, uh, switch between them. Here's window one, and here's window two, and I have a really nice, easy way. You'll see down here at the bottom of the screen, I've got a little display that's kind of handy, tells me what's going on. Um, so Tmux is, is a fantastic tool uh, if, as you sort of start with the joys of, uh, of programming at the terminal and using the terminal. All right, so now I've got, I'm in my root directory. I need to run the Sys161, uh, sorry, the OS161 debugger in the same directory where I run my kernel. Um, if you have poked around with Sys161, you'll see that it has this nice command line option. Now, currently Sys161 is set up so that anytime uh, there's a panic, it will wait for a debugger before exiting. So let me show you how that works. Let's fire up a kernel and let's panic on purpose. All right, so now what you'll see, I ran the panic shell, uh, kernel command, and that just generates a panic. Now what's happened is it's waiting for this debugger to connect. So let's go over here. Um, let's run OS161 GDB kernel um, Unix. I'll explain what this is doing in a sec. Um, so I'm going to connect to the uh, debugger, and then I can do a backtrace and see what's going on. And it turns out that this was generated by the command panic, which is part of the menu. Okay, um, so that's what kind of what will happen um, if you generate a, a panic, uh, if the kernel panics, and this will actually happen at any point. It'll wait for debugger connection, and now what I can do is just exit and, uh, I'm sorry, quit. I'll let it shut down. It won't shut down until the debugger connects. Um, however, a lot of times you want the kernel not to start until there's a debugger connected. So uh, if you run Sys161 with the dash W option, that's what will happen. Now, this is the little piece of black magic that you need uh, to connect to the Sys161 debugger. Um, and this isn't super um, black magic. Just let me kind of show you what's going on. When Sys161 runs, it creates a couple of sockets uh, in a dot sockets directory in that um, in the directory in which this one, this one is running. One of them is GDB. That's how GDB communicates with Sys161 in order to control the kernel that you're running for debugging purposes. There's also something called meter in there, which is used to generate stats. Um, and actually, if you run the stat161 command, yeah, that actually connects to uh, the meter device and pulls statistics about the kernel as it's running. Uh, let, me, let me show you how that works. Let's run this without that. And then, so this is that 161 output. It shows a little bit about what's going on. But anyway, that's not what this tutorial is about. Stat 161 is fun, but we're here to use the debugger. So let's do that. Got it. So now I'm waiting for my debugger. 
and what I do is I go to my other window. Um, here's the way to invoke the debugger. I give it the kernel binary so that it, it knows something about the symbols that it needs to use. Um, and then I invoke this magic incantation, which I uh, sort of uh, suggest. What this is telling it is to connect to a remote target. It's a Unix socket, and it's in the sockets GDB directory. So there we go. Okay, This is normal output when it starts up. Uh, GDB can't always interpret all of the code that Sys161 is using. Um, and But what I've done, you can see that Sys161 has accepted a new debugger connection. Now, nothing is going to happen, right, because the, the system is stopped. So, But this gives me an opportunity to do certain things, like, for example, Let's set a breakpoint on the panic menu command, okay? So what I've done uh, is I knew I had a particular command that I wanted the system to break when it uh, reached, and now I've set a breakpoint there, and now I'll continue, all right? Um, I don't know why this is happening. I think it's because it dropped some characters. All right, let's try it now. Break. And panic, continue. All right, there we go. Uh, yeah, there, there, this is clearly a bug in Sys161, and I will tell David about it. Um, all right, so now I'm at the menu, and I can pretty much do the normal things I would do, right? Let me run the the one of the synchronization tests. Okay, that worked. Um, debugger's still waiting, right, because I haven't run panic. But now, okay, system stopped, and now I'm in command panic. and it's useful to you know use GDB to kind of figure out what's going on with your system. So one of these little commands is L. That shows me a little bit of context about the command that I ran. Um, and if I hit return, it'll sort of keep going and show me more. So this is from uh, you can see I'm in main uh, menu.c uh, line 253. So this is the panic command, and you can see all it does is run panic. Right. So let's step through it. Um, we'll do next. Right. Um, and that told it to go to the next breakpoint, but at this point, actually, it did panic, and so it got a SIG trap. Um, and here, I can produce a backtrace. Um, this shows every stack frame. So how did I get to this panic, to this moment? Um, well, I started. This is the boot sequence. I executed kmain. Kmain read the menu. The menu tried to execute a command. Uh, this is a, just a command dispatcher that's part of the menu code. That command was panic. Panic executed the panic command, and then I ended up generating this L trace stop, right? So what's interesting is I can go up, oop, right? There's up, up, up. And what this does is it walks up and down the stack, right? So you can see here, here is in command dispatch. This is essentially how the menu code maps between the string that I entered, panic, and the command that actually gets run. If I go down, uh, you'll see that that ended up in command panic. Uh, let's go up. Um, no, I can't, suddenly can't type. Uh, so uh, let's go up one more time. And you can see this is essentially the main menu loop here, right? Um, let's, let's, let's list it 780. Uh, there we go. So this is you know the main menu that, that's being executed. Um, I print the kernel prompt. I get a string and I try to execute it. So this is a good way of sort of exploring what's going on in your system. There's great documentation for GDB online. The only worries that uh, I would point out is that GDB does the OS161 GDB because it's debugging through this socket that's provided by the system simulator does not necessarily provide all the capabilities that you might be used to. So for example, I think watch points or something that doesn't work uh, very well, if not at all. But you can set breakpoints, you can step through things, you can step in and out of functions, you can generate backtraces. There's a lot of useful features here. JDB is a tremendously powerful tool for inspecting your uh, running kernel. And in comparison with printf and other sort of uh, declarative styles of debugging, uh, this sort of feature is extremely powerful. And it's something that's worth learning because it will make it much, much easier for you to find out what's going wrong when things aren't behaving as expected. Okay, so that's the last of this one. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed these and uh, they've been uh, useful in some way. Good luck with assignment zero.